Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on Understanding Unbalance. My name is Jason Tranter, the Founder and Managing Director of Mobius Institute. Mobius Institute provides vibration training and accredited certification. So, unbalance exists when the mass center line and the geometric center line do not coincide. What does all that mean? So, the geometric center line is the center of geometry, which for our fan should be right through the center of the shaft. So if we draw a circle around it and said where does it intersect? Well it should, if the machine's designed properly, go straight through the center of our shaft. And that's where it also wants to rotate. So there's our geometric center line. Now our mass center line should be in the same location. If all the mass is evenly distributed around our machine, uh, then the center of mass would be right through the center of the rotor as well. But when that is not the case, when the geometric center and the mass center are not equal, then when we spin the rotor, it will wobble and that is unbalanced. Now I've got a you know, offset to the right here, but of course it could be offset anywhere by any amount. So we need to reduce unbalance because unbalance in cause, uh, increases the stress on the machine which reduces the life of the machine and the structure. It will damage the structure. It can cause uh, workers in the area to feel that high vibration. It can affect product quality. It can annoy neighbors. I mean, that's pretty extreme unbalance. But in any case, it can certainly damage the bearings and the seals. And if there is any resonance occurring, then the more unbalanced vibration, we get more amplification and therefore much higher vibration. Same as if we have any looseness, then that unbalance drives those the ability for it to be loose, if you know what I mean. If it's loose, then we get more motion if there's more unbalanced vibration. Okay, so the other key thing about unbalance is that the forces generated are proportional to the speed squared. So if we double the speed, we get four times the amount of force or four times the amount of motion, which this little animation is attempting to show. So therefore, as we increase the speed we will see higher vibration which may not be something you intend to do but what it really means is that for a high speed machine unbalance is extremely important it is important to minimize it as much as possible so why do we get unbalance very commonly in fans it's just a build up of dirt it might be a loss of material you know through wear or cavitation or erosion or corrosion or something like that it might be due to poor castings or uh, incorrect roundness for example eccentricity it might be you know a loss of a part a balance weight might fall off a fastener might uh, come away. It might be loss of part of the coupling. It might be, in this case, just the way it's been put together, which is not sensible. Of course, this is a little bit obvious. But anyway, there's a lot of causes. We have to you know, correct any mechanical problems that might exist, like missing blades and so on, but then we're going to go through the balance process. So, one way of illustrating unbalance, if we have a rotor here and we put an unbalanced weight on, then in a single plane unbalanced case that we have here, the rotor will want to turn until that unbalanced mass is at the bottom, you know, thanks to gravity. But if we let the rotor spin, then we're going to see a lot of vibration as a result. And of course, if we put even more weight, causing even more vibration, um, more unbalanced, then we get a lot more vibration. So we need to minimize that uh, unbalance that exists and therefore reduce the unbalanced forces. So the most common type of unbalance with narrow rotors like the one shown here is called static unbalance. That's where all the unbalance is more or less in one single plane. We can see the characteristic motion of, un of static unbalance. In this case the center of mass is moved away from the center of geometry. So there's our center of geometry. As the mass, out of balance mass, is 
increased that I've tried to illustrate here the center of mass is pulled away from the center of geometry now of course when we run the machine we you know mount it in bearings and you know design a machine to support it but of course those bearings are now trying to contain those circular forces that we just saw a moment ago in a classic case of couple unbalance we have um, unbalanced mass that's 180 degrees opposite each other and equal mass. That's a very specific case of unbalance which you're unlikely to see in reality but it's a term that you should understand. So in this case as these two sources of unbalanced mass uh, increase it draws the center of mass away at each end of the rotor but in actual fact the center still coincides with the center of geometry so we see the the motion that we see there but in actual fact if we were to put this rotor on a knife edge it wouldn't roll because statically it's balanced it's just got a couple unbalanced the more common situation um, that we would see uh, with a longer rotor like this is what we call dynamic unbalance where we can you know consider the unbalance to be you know, different masses at each end at a different angle and it creates this wobble and exactly how that mass is built up uh, just depends on the root cause of the unbalanced problem but when we look at how the center of mass is moved we get a static portion and a coupled portion so there's dynamic is there for a combination of static and couple unbalance but of course as with the other situations our machine has to and structure has to withhold those centripetal forces and that's what causes the damage in the case of an overhung rotor we get the radial vibration the radial motion that we've seen so far which I'm not really showing in this animation but we also get a rocking motion which you can see there and so in addition to those radial forces which cause damage we also get axial forces it's causing an actual force along the length of the machine and that causes its own form of damage so in conclusion unbalance is common more common in some machines than other others and it is destructive to the machine the forces associated with unbalance are far greater with higher speed rotors Static unbalance is common in narrow rotors where the unbalanced forces are focused in a single plane. Couple unbalance is a special case where we have longer rotor but the unbalance is equal and opposite. The same weight but opposite each other at each end of the rotor. That's the way we can model the uh, couple unbalanced situation. But dynamic unbalance is the most common when we have longer rotors and that's where you know if we were to sum up all the unbalanced forces they would not be equal at either end of the rotor and not exactly opposite each other so I hope this brief presentation has helped clarify a few points associated with unbalance um, thank you for viewing this presentation and if you have any questions please feel free to contact us